welcome to today's video. So we put out on Instagram that we were gonna answer some of your questions. So Pat has the phone and he's gonna scroll through, ask me some of the questions that you guys wanted to know and hopefully we'll have some answers for you. If we don't get to them all, there's kind of a few questions. We'll try to cover what we can um, and then maybe we'll do another video on this and cover some more in the future. But let's get started. Uh, there's a ton of questions, so I'm gonna try to get. I'm gonna try to pick through and grab some good ones. Uh, some of these off the bat are already pretty funny. Um, first one I see here is from a friend of ours. We did his podcast, Clyde Dale, um, Clyde Dale Fitness and Friends. How do you recover when you do CrossFit Games Phase One, HOA the next weekend, CrossFit Games testing the weekend after that, and then Spartan Racing the weekend after that? Well, how do you recover? You eat a lot and you sleep a lot. So um, I went four weekends in a row. I went CrossFit Games Stage 1, HOA, CrossFit Games Testing, we did the entire weekend, and then Spartan Games, which was some of the craziest stuff that I've done just because it was different style of training. Um, but how I recovered was I used my sidekick tool, I used my beam, and I focused on eating a lot and getting really good sleep, and then just not looking ahead to the next weekend. So when it all kicked off, kicked off, I knew I had four weekends in a row, and I was getting a lot of stress and anxiety because I was focusing on the future and not actually what was happening that weekend. So being in the moment and focusing on that weekend, doing my best at whatever it was I was working on, and then focusing on sleeping, recovering, stretching, mobilizing, and then I honestly wasn't working out because I needed recovery days. So I would compete, and then I would take two days off, do a lighter aerobic where I wasn't taking my heart rate super high, and then travel and then move on to the next thing and then compete or do what I was doing, take a couple days off, a lighter mixed modal, just sweat and then travel. And sometimes that's just what you have to do. So I wasn't training and pushing things forward, but I also wanted to make sure I was recovered and not beating myself down into a hole. Yeah, I would say even to add from that, from my perspective, that the CrossFit game stage one wasn't a huge amount of volume and it was something that we built up to for months and months prior to that. Um, and because that wasn't a ton of volume, the recovery wasn't too bad from that. And then there was a week in between, or almost a week, uh, in between each event, which was lower intensity and really just more recovery type stuff. Um, probably one of the harder things was so much travel, to be honest, is, or at least from my perspective. Like the competing's hard, but going from West Coast time zone back to us, to the other side on the East Coast, that travel, I think, makes it almost just as challenging on top of the volume. Yep. So it was really fun and you only live once. So I tried to take the experiences and say yes as much as I can. Um, kind of following up to that, a uh, member from our gym, Michael Bass, he's got a two part. First one just says, get your mom on. So I don't really think that's a question. It's more just uh, a very stern suggestion. And then also what about recovery for older athletes training frequency? So just in case you guys don't know, my mom is a total badass. Um, she made the games in 2016, 2017, 2018. She would have made it in 2019, but she chose not to do it. Um, and she just is an incredible cyclist and an incredible athlete. So that's for her. She's 60 years old. She just turned 60 and to see her recovery and her frequency of training is just really interesting and it's a whole nother side. So if you're an older athlete, what I would suggest is making sure you build in a full recovery day. So a full day off, you can still, you don't have to sit on the couch. You can go for a walk, you can go for a bike ride, you can play with the kids, but you want to keep your heart rate down. So keeping it in, you know, the 120 to 140 range at the highest, making sure it stays lower. Um, so that way we're not taxing your system. The other thing I would say is frequency of training is watch how heavy of weight you lift how often. So making sure that you're not overdoing it because as you get older, that's going to make it harder to recover. Even for myself from 23 to 31, I can't do the heavy weights as often because that's when I see injuries and that's what really breaks my body down. Yeah, I think, I think also just really focusing on the quality of what you're doing. Uh, when you're young, you can almost get away with just doing a whole lot of everything and making sure that you hit all your bases. The older that you get, the smarter that you have to be to where you're getting the most out of what you're doing and you're not wasting your time doing things that are taking away from recovery or getting you fitter or healthier. I think the last piece I would say is along those lines is make sure you warm up. So the older you get, the longer you need to warm up. You, it is key and then also know your why and your goals. So we're not 20 years old anymore trying to, I don't know, qualify or be a D1 athlete in a college setting. Know your why, know your goals, and help that determine what, you're, what kind of fitness that you're doing and how often you're doing it. Um, how is the transition from coach to athlete, husband to wife on a day-to-day -day basis? 
Oh gosh, so that's referring to Pat coaching me this year. Um, I always tell people it's a really enjoyable experience because we both take pride in it. I think he probably gets more nervous than I do because he knows that he's helping prepare me and he wants to see me do well. There are times that sometimes he has coach hat on that I would just like him to just be like, give me a hug and tell me he loves me. But I think that's some of the times that I need him to hold me accountable and that makes it hard. So there's times that I don't necessarily like coach, um, but I always love my husband. So it's just kind of balancing those two things. Yeah, I think it's, it's helpful that we've really aligned our goals and we're both working towards the same thing. So uh, I think when, when you can do that, it makes things a little bit easier. So even when things aren't maybe going the smoothest or you don't see eye to eye, you're at least working towards the same thing and not trying to steer the ship in two different directions. But like he hit on, you don't always see eye to eye and that's expected. And um, you should be able to express how you feel and your coach should be able to listen to you and you guys come up with a plan that fits for whatever you're going through. But it was an experience and I think we enjoyed every second of it. Um, let's see, how do you train around injuries? What are the major, inj major injuries you have faced and how did, that, how did they happen? Injuries are tough. So injuries, I have faced, uh, I think it was 2018. I dealt with a back injury. Um, I literally was deadlifting 125 pounds and my back just seized up. And that was due to poor movement patterns prior. I've dealt with some knee stuff and I've dealt with some shoulder stuff. Injuries will occur. Um, I work with affiliate PT here in Columbus. Dr. Math Maddie Betts is amazing. And I found someone who knows my body and who can help me. So she gives me exercises that I need to be doing before I get into whatever it is and it's up to me to do them. She can give me all the exercises in the world, but if I don't do them, I'm not gonna be able to prevent injury or even get better and stronger so I can continue progressing forward. So find someone that can look at your movement patterns and help you and then it's up to you to do them. Just because they give you the exercises don't mean that you're just immediately gonna get better. You have to put the work in. So just building in time into our programming to make sure that I was doing the activation, to make sure that I was warming myself up the way I was supposed to be to keep things healthy. On the flip side, if you've experienced an injury, just taking it slow and taking it one step at a time and kind of accepting where you are and just being strong enough mentally to know that you will get better and to be patient with your body. And that can be the hardest thing. Yeah, I think just an overarching goal or mindset that we have is that it doesn't matter how fit you are if you're injured that fitness isn't worth anything whether you're a professional athlete or an everyday person at the gym um, you can be fit as a fiddle but if you're hurt and can't put that to use or can't compete then it doesn't matter and the same thing goes for if you have then gotten hurt sometimes you just have to take a couple steps back and focus on the recovery process because it doesn't again matter if you're getting fitter if that injury isn't going away so the best thing that you can do is stay healthy. And the second best thing, if you do get injured, is to prioritize getting better. Yeah, and just keep a positive attitude, even though it can be hard, and find a really great support system. Um, does it take longer to develop strength or a conditioning base? How do you balance the off season? I personally believe it takes longer to develop strength, but I came into CrossFit with a conditioning base. Um, it just kind of depends on your background, but I think just the pure adaptation of having to build that muscle takes longer. Um, and you have to just chip away day after day and year after year to get stronger over time. Uh, balancing that off season wise, because I love conditioning and that's really what my base is, I spend a lot of time doing bodybuilding and just working on isolating muscle groups and trying to get stronger. Yeah, I think to an extent, or I think as a general rule, strength is going to take longer. But to an extent, it's also just gonna matter, depend on who you are. So we all know those people who can come in and just pick up a ton of weight without ever doing it before. They're just genetically stronger. Or the vice versa of that, people who maybe don't do that much conditioning but are just rabbits in the gym. And there's a little bit of genetics that play into that, but whichever way uh, you kind of look at it, a long-term approach is gonna do you the best and quality within that. So you can't go wrong um, building out a season throughout the year to where maybe in the winter you are working a little bit more on, on strength that you can build up and then towards the summertime you're working a little bit more on conditioning uh, though that never goes away like when we're working more on strength foundation we're still just doing longer cardio sessions that just don't tax us as much so it's those 40 to 60 minute uh, moderate heart rate type workouts that still get a good sweat keep the conditioning base but maybe we're not working so much on the sprints and the high power output volume
Those are my favorite. Let's see. Last one. Um. I saw one on there, you can keep looking, but the first one I want to answer is how did we meet? So we get that question a lot. Uh, Pat and I met through CrossFit. So I was auditing for KPMG at the time and I had swam in D1 for Louisville and I felt like I was getting really out of shape. I just went into running before or after work. A lot of times it was before because we'd work pretty late during busy season and I needed something else. I felt like my muscles were just kind of going away from what I had developed in swimming. And so I had a friend convince me to join Derby City CrossFit, which is where I met him. We actually met for the first time at the 2013 regionals in Columbus, Ohio, where he was competing. And I just went with the gym to support whoever it was that was competing. I didn't know it was Pat at the time. And then we hit it off right then. Um, from there, we just kind of, I don't know, we stayed after, we started working out together and that's, that's how we met. So CrossFit is very special to me, not only for how it's changed our life, but it's also helped me meet my life partner as well. You wanna do one more? Yeah, one more. Uh, what are the secret things that happen behind the scenes at a competition that nobody knows about? <laughs> the secret things. Christy being uh, stressed out to the max and a terror to deal with. Deal with. No, I'm kidding. This hero is a lot better. Um, but the secret things are this, your support system. Pat does everything. Um, from helping make sure I have the food that I need, make sure that I'm warmed up, have the equipment that I need, everything set up, the support and the love that I need, and also the strategy. So he pretty much does it all. I would love to hear your take on that. Um, I think maybe pulling the curtains back just a little bit, whether you're at the CrossFit Games or any other big competition, they do a really good job like glorifying it from the outside. There's big lights, there's um, the equipment is set up amazingly, everything's big and grand, and it seems professional. Um, and kind of as soon as you walk behind the scenes, it's just the back, you know, the back alleys of any um, venue. It's not glamorous, to be honest. A lot of times we're just kind of hanging out on the floor, you got your bag set up and it doesn't um, look that much different than like a you know locker room not that it's a locker room but how anybody at the gym would just kind of toss their bags down and hang out before class so that portion is not as kind of glamorized as once you step out or once they step out on the CrossFit floor yeah we just kind of set up camp toss our stuff around and hang out um, but that's also what makes it really fun but I also think behind the scenes you might see some tears, you might see some joy, just a lot of emotions that maybe you, we see on the floor but then off the floor when we have time to reflect and look back on how we executed, could have been really good or could have been really bad. If it's really bad, we usually give ourselves five minutes. I get five minutes to pout and then I'm on to the next thing because it doesn't do you any good in a competition to dwell on the past. Even if it's good, five minutes, celebrate it, be pumped, um, and then focus on the next thing. So that's a little bit of some of the behind the scenes but these were awesome questions thank you guys for submitting them if we didn't get to yours we had a ton of questions we will definitely do this again if you like this kind of a video please smash the like button if there's any comments you had on anything we did answer drop them below don't forget to check out the links in our bio and join our closed facebook group and yeah i think that's all have a great day guys smash that like button